This is part two of building the body on the BMW Roadster. So I've been uh, contemplating how I want to do this uh, this hood because that's the first piece I'm going to do here. So um, I wanted to originally have a, a functioning hinge and hood, but then I got to thinking that you know in reality uh, this panel right here. A couple of screws and it's off and I can get to the inside to work on it. So I really don't need a functioning hood. But I like the idea of seeing the hinge butt here. So I took a piano hinge and I cut off the extra part leaving just this piece. I'll probably double stick tape this down. And then uh, I'll bring the aluminum up and I'll screw it in here. And so it'll appear to be a functioning hinge, but really it's just a faux hinge. And the aluminum will capture it. I left a little flange here. So I, I like that look. I'm, I'm going to go in that direction. So that means I'm doing two halves. So I've been working on, let's see if I can set this here, a pattern. So I've got this uh, piece of mat board dialed in pretty close. Um, where I can finesse it when I install it. So that will sit uh, like that. So I think that's going to look pretty good. That's how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to start working on uh, finessing these patterns and get some aluminum cut. And I'll get to use the slip roll to make it. So I failed to mention that I installed the cowl piece. It actually took me two tries. The first first one it was close, but just wouldn't quite get it. But I used that to uh, make this one more accurate. And so when I finally attached the screws and I worked my way around, it laid right in real nice, right on the seam. So right here, that will have screws in it ultimately here because there'll be some wood back here coming up. So, I'm happy with the way that looks. It turned out good and there's a decent spot right here to attach the hood. And it'll come down then it'll attach across here. And then back up in this half of the piece of wood and so forth. So, the body's starting to look more complete. If I get the hood on, which won't be all that easy, and then I get this radiator on, that'll be another tough piece. And then these side pieces, they'll be a cakewalk. Okay. I decided to use the epoxy. It's a two-part mix, 15-minute cure. Uh, to uh, glue this hinge down. And, uh, you know, it just has to hold it in place long enough for the metal. The aluminum will come up around and capture it. Then it won't be going anywhere. This is the pattern I used to uh, make the hood blanks. And uh, I uh, very carefully laid it on, clamped it down, and, and worked the edge. Got a nice edge that I could transfer to a piece of aluminum with the Sharpie marker. So, I don't have them installed yet, but I have the shape pretty close. So this I can I can easily bring that down as I come come along with the screws. It'll start to lay down, and then I'll just work my way around. I'll come from the top down here. Now this panel still is a hair long. Uh, you know, after I mark it with the marker, I put it on the bandsaw and I trim it within that marker line. And that gets me close enough to where I can hand file it to what I want. You can see the marks from the roller here. Um, I struggled. This was the first one I did and it took me a couple of tries. Uh, and you can see the roller marks here. I, was, I started from this side and I worked this tight radius first. And I come to find out that it was better if I... And you'll see the, the marks are different here because I started... I started here. I put this light crown in first, and when I got to the radius point, which is this mark right here, then I tightened up the rollers and just went back and forth until I got the shape. And I learned to leave this alone, leave that flat. 
So just a little bit of uh, filing work and I can start uh, drilling and screwing it down. So even though this one was harder to do, it still turned out all right. But this one's a lot better. That, using that slip roll is fun. Boy, having a hood on there starts to look like a real car. All right, tomorrow I'll get them finally installed. And then I can move on to that grill piece, or the radiator piece. This first panel went on pretty good. I hardly had to work it at all. A little bit of filing on the edges, and uh, then I laid out the marks for the holes, a couple inches on center. And it looks pretty good. It took me a while, but I got both uh, halves of the hood installed now. Seam turned out pretty good. The hinge butt looks nice. Okay, it's on there nice and solid too, it uh, lended a lot of strength to that front end. Okay, so now I'm going to focus on, on this piece here. Now on to the radiator shroud. Somehow I misplaced the original pattern, I don't know where the hell it went, so I had to make a fresh one. So I've got this one ready to go. It's the length I want it to be. And uh, I'm ready to transfer it to aluminum. Here's the pattern that goes over the top of the radiator. So this mat board was cut real carefully to follow the profile. And then I lay it on the aluminum and then I trace it around with the Sharpie. Now when I get on the bandsaw, I go right in the middle of that line because the inside of this line is exactly the shape I want. So as long as I stay in the blue line, then when I go to file it, I really don't have that much to file to get it to fit into place. So that's how I, in essence, size the panels. All right, I'm gonna cut this one out. Here's the radiator shroud, looking uh, pretty good. We've got it all filed. It fits nice. So I just have to screw it in place to call that one done. I'm happy to report I finished the shroud over the radiator. I'm happy with the way it fits. It was a bit of a challenge because it wanted to buckle a little bit here, but I was able to tap it down. And then here I'm screwing into a half inch panel, so that's got to be accurate there. Mm -hmm. All right, side panels next. Continuing on with the body panels here. I managed to get the uh, finish getting the side panels on both sides. This panel here is the one with the louvers. And then this one down here has a hole in it. I cut a hole in a piece of plywood and sanded it real nice. And then I put the aluminum over the top of the plywood and then ran a router around my jigsaw cutout. That's how I got a nice clean cut. This is just on there kind of loose right now, but. Plenty of room for suspension travel. Same thing on this side. And then I also added some wood here for strength. This is two pieces of bending plywood. And uh, being that this is a radius shape here, I put glue in between, clamped it and screwed it all together, and then when the glue dries, it keeps that shape. And I used the same material I soaked these little pieces in water, then put some glue in there, clamped it, and uh, now that holds its shape. There's one on each side. And then this piece of wood here will go in between the two. I still have to glue it together. And uh, 
So it serves two purposes. This is <clears throat> for strength so you can get in and out of it. And then on the real car, there's a band of metal that continues up and over underneath the dash and back down. So um, I'll, I'll ultimately laminate this in aluminum or something. And then I have to come up with uh, whatever I'm going to cover that with. It could be Formica or uh, I could paint it or put some metal on it. And then I'm going to do some uh, simple interior panels here to cover up all these screws. You know, I'll fine tune that later. Here I managed to finish the uh, installation of the wood that goes up underneath the cowl skin. Uh, I used a combination of uh, wood glue and uh, contact cement and a bunch of clamps. So once that's all dry, I can sand it and shape it, and that'll give me a nice flat surface to apply the uh, the metal edge. It's going to go up and around and across and down. So the glue is dry enough that I took off the clamps and you can see the concept here. See how that three quarter inch band of wood continues all the way around. Like I said before, that's, that's two layers of three eighth inch bending plywood. So I still need to uh, grind it down. I use a sign grinder with a um, sanding disc on it like an 80 grit and it'll take that right down and then I'll hand block it to finish it out. So, but before I do all that, I've been uh, wanting to work on the radiator. I, I have this concept that, that finally came together in my mind, so I'll show you that next. Here's my concept for my radiator. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with a piece of three-quarter plywood. That's what I have right here. Then this is going to get cut out here in the middle. And then I have some of this uh, honeycomb material, which will fit down in, into that recess. Um, so that's what you have right here. So, so this frame in here is plywood. Then I'm going to cover that frame after I cut out the middle. I'm going to cover the flat surface. That'd be this part here and going up here. With this aluminum right here, this is uh, polished aluminum. It's a mirror finish. It's thin, less than a sixteenth of an inch. It's got a plastic coating on it right now. But that's going to go right here to create the, a chrome face. All right. Then all around it, I'm going to bend it. It'll join right here, but I'll bend this piece of, this is eighth by one. So uh, that will go all the way around this. I'll uh, hammer it and uh, form it till it comes together right here at the bottom. And uh, being that this is one inch and the plywood is three quarter, there'll be a quarter inch recess. Kind of look like a radiator. So later I'll make some kind of ornament and some kind of medallion here. I don't exactly know yet how I'm going to do that. But it's an eighth by one aluminum polished to a mirror finish, so that'll have a chrome surround. Then it'll have the polished chrome face, so that'll look nice, two pieces of chrome. Then it'll have this honeycomb thing, which really has the appearance of a radiator. And it's uh, got a little thickness to it, it's a half inch thick. So that'll, that'll create another quarter inch recess inside this cutout here, and they'll paint that edge black. So there'll be two recesses, one from the one inch down to three quarter, from the three quarter down to half inch. So I think that'll create some depth. Might look okay. So that's my plan. And here are my raw materials, and I'm going to start working through it. Uh, to get this to polish up, I'm going to sand it. I've already sanded on it some. I sand it with 220, 320, 400, then 600, and then I put it on my buffing wheel over there, and it'll polish right up. We'll have a nice nice sheen to it. So I'm working on that. I'd say it took me about an hour, but I got this piece of aluminum all polished up. Kind of an antique, uh, you know, shiny finish. It's not super polished. And then on the other side, I didn't polish it as much because only a quarter inch showed. But this side I tried to do as good a job as I could. 
Alright, so I'm gonna next I'm gonna next I'm gonna wrap the aluminum around this piece of plywood. Okay. I've got a setup here to uh, try and wrap this aluminum around this piece of plywood. Have me a center line here, and I found the center of the piece of aluminum. So I'm going to work it around this form by hand. Just work it and finesse it. I've got a round pipe here that I can use to get these uh, radiuses tight. But uh, I'll just keep working it until it fits pretty good. And then I'm going to put a couple of oval head screws in the side and, and then a couple of screws down here to hold it in. Alright, let's see how this turns out. So you can see, I, I put a clamp in the center here. If I pull it around, you see how it's starting to form. So this just gets it started. You see how it springs back? So I'm going to keep finessing that until it stays there. So this straightens out and stays on the line. I want it at rest. I want it to be pretty darn close to fitting. Right now it's still still too much tension. But it's coming along. You can see how by working it, it's starting to come in and get closer to the edge here. That's at rest and it's not quite as springy. It's fits pretty good up here. Follows it up to a point. So I just keep finesse, finesse. Pretty soon I'll have it. Might take me an hour, but that's okay. As long as it turns out all right. This morning I'm continuing on with wrapping this uh, eighth by one inch aluminum around. I, I want to do it by hand. I don't want to pound on it because I've already polished it. So, uh, But I, I'm using these uh, oval head screws. They fit down into a countersink and they look a little nicer than a pan head. So I'm going to add a couple more here and that will help keep it together. I have this clamp set up here with some tape on it. And I've got to turn around here and then cut it at the center point and the screw on either side there. So once I have that on, then I'll remove this and I'll go to bandsaw or uh, jigsawing out this center section. Then I can use contact cement to glue on the uh, chrome aluminum, polished aluminum. So it's coming together. Nice self-contained unit. Okay, I finished the hard part. That was getting this aluminum wrapped. Came together at the seam here. It's all nice and shiny. Looks pretty good. So uh, I got to cut out the center and put in the honeycomb and put on this aluminum here. That should go a little bit easier. And I'm liking the looks of this. Here's a little sneak uh, peek where I just clamped it to the front. It's not looking too bad. Still have to put a piece of body work down here, more like this. But uh, looks good there with the shiny ring going around. Still have to put in the center, but yeah. Whatever color I paint it, that'll look good with a chrome ring right there. I finished making the uh, cutout here on the piece of plywood where the radiator is going to go. And then uh, I sanded it so it's all, all prepped and ready. Then I wrapped out this uh, piece of alum polished aluminum here. It's just slightly bigger so I can uh, trim it. I'm going to trim it with a router. I'm going to glue it on first, drill a hole, and then I can run my router around it inside and out. And then I also have to uh, trace out around the inside here and get this honeycomb to fit in there. And I, then I have to paint this edge black. So it's kind of a sequence, but uh, I think it's going to turn out just fine. I managed to finish the radiator piece. It took me uh, about eight hours, I guess. But uh, it's looking pretty good. I'm happy with it. 
I don't know exactly how I'm going to install it on the cart, probably from behind, but I'll have to take off some panels. Yep. Yeah, that's going to be a nice piece to install. I couldn't resist clamping this radiator piece in place, and I have to say I'm pleased with the way it turned out. It's going to be a nice element to an otherwise simple car. It's nice and lightweight, and once I cut out that center, uh, it just left a little bit of plywood and a little bit of aluminum, so it's nice and light, which is good because this car is already kind of heavy. Yeah, I'm liking that. Okay, I had to put the wheels on too, just to get the feel for how this thing's going to look. So that's going to look pretty good coming down the street. Continuing on now, I've been working on refining this edge right here. I've been sanding on it, shaping it, trying to get it as square as I can. So it's looking pretty good. I've sanded these panels here. So my plan is to, um, I have a particular uh, laminate like for mica that I'm going to put in on there and, and on this other side. And then I'm going to use the same for mica in there. I'm going to put it on a eighth inch or quarter inch panel. So that'll finish off the sides on the inside. And then uh, on this top edge, <clears throat> I'm going to use this same aluminum. I'll have to cut a special piece in these corners, but uh, then I can file it. I'll, I'll glue it on with contact cement, and then I can file it real nice. And then that will get painted along with the body. And I'm also going to extend this dash down a little bit. I've got room to do that. So I can have a speedometer face or something there. And then I can pick a different material that goes along with the interior uh, design. So anyway, that's been my focus and uh, I've been rounding up materials to work on this. So in the next couple evenings, I'm going to get this part done. Before I can laminate this top edge, I need to laminate these uh, inner panels. I'm using a Formica. It's uh, kind of a wood grain material. There's some of it in there. I just put a piece in there temporarily. But uh, <clears throat> I'm using contact cement, so I've spread the glue on this half, and then uh, in here, here's the piece, it's cut to the pattern, and I've applied glue here. Here's the material. You know, one thing about being a cabinet builder by trade is I always have some kind of nice leftover materials I can use on my cycle carts. So this is uh, actual wood veneer. There's a plastic coating on it here. Let's see if I can get it peeled up. There we go. So this this is real wood veneer. It has a nice matte finish, and it's pre-finished from the factory, so it's impervious to lacquer thinner and grease and oil. So that's material I'm using on the inside of the cart. So here in a few minutes. A little bit longer, I'll be able to stick this first panel. Okay, I finished uh, installing the laminate on the inside of the cart. And then I also prepped this edge. And then I laminated under here too. And then that will receive the same aluminum that's uh, used here. Um, I also have a couple other tasks I want to perform here. I want to put uh, side panels in here on either side. And I also need to install the radiator. So to provide access, I cut, uh, cut away most of the plywood here. And that allows me to get in here and work on these panels and also install the radiator and the uh, honeycomb. So... I'm hacking away at it. All right, I finally finished installing the radiator. And I'm real happy with the way it turned out. Fit the front end real nice. Through this opening I cut here, I was able to reach in and screw it in from behind. And the same opening will let me put in the side panels. 
And then uh, I left a half inch section of plywood all the way around and that's where the honeycomb will fit in flush or slightly recessed. I'll probably have to have to paint that black. But uh, you know early on when I was thinking about the front end I thought it'd be nice if this this whole front section would come off to get to things. Well it's been that idea has been modified now it's just the honeycomb that comes out to uh, get to everything. So if this thing ever gets beat up from racing around, I can relaminate this right here. I can repolish this, and I can put in a new piece of honeycomb. So there's no reason I shouldn't be able to keep the front end of this thing looking good. So uh, before I put the honeycomb in, I have to put in the, the side panel. So I'm going to work on that now. I removed the top panel here so I could... Uh, get decent access to install these side panels. So what I did uh, first is, you can see the little walnut blocks. Got them up here too. Those I screwed, I glued on first and then I screwed them in from, from the outside. So they're on there nice and solid. And that'll give me an attachment point uh, for the panels, uh, which will get screwed on from the inside. And they'll have the same material on it as this uh, wood grain right here. So that ought to give it a kind of an elegant looking interior. Alright, so I got the blocks installed, so now I gotta work on the actual panels, get them to fit. So here are the two panels that I'm going to uh, install on the inside. Uh, ultimately, I'm gonna cover them with this laminate here. So I'm going to use a jigsaw to cut out these spaces to lighten it up. This is quarter inch board here. Here's the spots where they're going to screw into the blocks. So when I get done cutting this one, I'll use it as the pattern to cut the other one. So I'll get them cut, I'll sand them real quick, and then I'll put the laminate on and it won't be long before I'll have them done. Here I've used a jigsaw to cut out some holes to lighten the panel. And uh, that significantly uh, lessened the, late, the weight of that panel, so I'm happy about that. So then I'm going to use this laminate in contact cement. I'll go over the top of it, and the laminate will span those gaps just fine. Alright, so that was pretty heavy to start with, so I'm real happy with that. I gotta cut the other one out and then get these laminated on there. Now I'm applying the contact cement to both parts. Let it dry 15-20 uh, minutes and then stick it. This is the same kind of uh, contact cement you'd use to put countertops down. Works pretty good I think. I have the first one laminated in place and I took off the plastic covering. It's got a nice matte finish to it. That stuff's nice. This is expensive stuff. I'll bet that's $400 for a 4x8 sheet. I'm pretty proud of that. It's for high-end uh, commercial properties and things like that. Here's the other side. So you see how the laminate spanned the gap. So that made the panel nice and light. Alright, gotta get the other one done and get these things installed. Well, 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 things are looking up. Finished getting the interior panels installed. All right, I like that. See, I worked hard to get the grain to match so they line up. I got this gap right here because of this piece of metal right here to help brace the cow. But boy, that makes it nice and clean inside. side held in with a screw and a finish washer so since this is a simple car I figured I'd try to do a nice interior I'm gonna put some carpet in it and uh, I have something planned to make this dash look better than it does now and then uh, I'll, I'll have uh, my upholstery guy do a leather seat. Ooh, yeah. So, 
since it's grandma's car, we want to make it nice, Boulevard Cruiser. Here's how uh, this kind of came together. If you can see in there, down in there's the block. And then it's just proud of these screws. So, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna put this cover back on, get the honeycomb in here, and then it'll be looking way better. I'd uh, say this sweet little BMW is shaping up pretty nice. Uh, managed to get a lot, a lot of things done in this second uh, video um, on building the body. So let's call this the end of the second video. I'm about at the 30 minute mark. Um, and then uh, I'm going to continue on. Uh, there's still quite a few little things to do. And then of course I have to build the rear cover which I believe I have figured out, but I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. Um, I got to put a license plate on the front down there. I got to get louvers put in the side panels. I got to do the top trim around the uh, driver, co the cockpit there. Got the dash, carpet. So still a ways to go, but uh, not bad for two videos. So we'll see what the next one has in store.